In this video, we do the graphical approach for a maximum bounded standard. To satisfy stockholders, the company needs to make a profit of $5 on each goose down pillow and $9 on each goose down comforter it manufactures. The company buys high quality goose down from a distributor who guarantees a supply of 2,500 pounds a week. The factory is limited to 45 workers at 40 hours per week. The pillows require 2 pounds of down, 1 hour of work, and the comforters 4 pounds of down, 3 hours of work. How many of each per week should the company manufacture for maximum profit? We calculate the hours, go to the home screen, and take 45 times 40 to get 1800. Then we go over to our OneNote and put the numbers from the word problem plus the 1800 hours into this chart. Then we take this chart and translate it into maximize P equal to 5X plus 9Y subject to X is greater than 0, Y is greater than 0. 2x plus 4y is less than or equal to 2,500, and x plus 3y is less than or equal to 1,800. We now take a look at our subpage. We switch to the draw page. Highlight the 2x plus 4y is less than 2,500, and use the math assistant to draw a picture of this graph. We do the same thing with x plus 3y is less than 1800. Use the math assistant and draw a picture of this graph. From the first graph, we see that the point 0, 0600 and 1800 0 pretty much covers the range of the y and the x. And from the second graph, 0, 0600 and 1300 0 cover the range of the y and x of the graph. We look at the um, range then of both graphs together. We need 2,000 by 600, and we need tick marks of scales on the X by 500 and the Y by 200. Armed with this information, we will move over to our calculator and graph this function. So we go to our apps. We choose the Advanced Graphing app. We press enter. We have already loaded in these functions. So we loaded in x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, 2x plus 4y is less than or equal to 2500, x plus 3y is less than or equal to 1800. Then to get this graph to turn out like shown over here, we use the end operation with the x, y for all the different v points. We also turn on v3 and v4 so we get a better picture of what's happening. So this picture shows us the solution in dark over. The first two show us where these two intercepts. To get these values here, we take the values that we were armed with over here and go to our plot settings. Since we want to go a little bit to the left and a, and a little bit lower, we go from minus 500 to 2000, from minus 200 to 800, with an x tick of 500 and a y tick of 200. Then we hit our plot and we end up with the graph that we have shown here. We now need to figure out the corners of the graph of the overlap shaded area. One last comment about plot setup. Make sure that the label is checked so that you get the label shown on your graph. Let's now switch to the CAS screen and let's scroll all the way up to the top of our history. We use our CAS screen to help us come up with the corner points. The first one, we take the equation 2x plus 4y equal 2500 with y equals 0. To get this, we use the template right here, the width template. 
We then hit the toolbox, the CAS menu, solve three, and solve one to come up with the solve command. Then we highlight this particular entry and copy it into our solve command, comma X, to get our answer to be 1250. So this is how we come up with our answer 1250 and zero over here on our corner uh, listing. Our next step is to find the point of intersection. We use the solve command again. Now there are two possibilities. We chose to use the list operator, put the first equation, the second equation, comma, the list operator, and then the letters X and Y to get our two answers. We could have also used the matrix bracket operation to come up with the same answers. To clarify list operator, we use the brace key, which would be shift eight. And for matrix operator, we use the bracket key, which is shift five. We did not use the lift or matrix function. We used the braces and the brackets themselves in the solve. We copied this corner point down and then went back to figure out our last corner point. So we took the last equation, the width operator, which again was the template key here, with x equal to zero, and then used the solve operator to come up with 600. Therefore, our last point, our last corner point was zero, 600. We highlighted this entry and copied it, then went back to our main page and pasted it in. Then we went over to our calculator and calculated the corner points. Scrolling up, we see that we use the width operator and we use matrices to come up with the x equal, y equal, and the width operator. Let's take a look at one of these to see what's going on. So we'll click on this one and we'll copy it. So what happens is with the width operator here, with matrices, you have a plus or minus key. So you use your arrow pad to move from one entry to the second entry. We should mention that the documentation for the HD prime refers to a single row matrices as a vector. Transferring our calculator answers over to our chart, we have 00, zero is 0, 1250, 0 is 6250, 150, 550 is 5700, and 0, 0600 is 5400. We see that 6250 is the maximum profit, so the company should make 1250 goose down pillows per week for a profit of 6 thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. This ends our lesson on graphically solving a bounded standard problem by corner points.